Now in this episode, we're going to talk a little bit more about lists and we're going to look at the preferences and how preferences uh, can affect how our route is created. First, you'll notice that all of the waypoints and this route that we created show up over here on the left hand side of the screen under unlisted data. Now that's because we haven't created a list yet. So a list is basically a collection of waypoints and routes that kind of go together that make sense. You could sort of think of it as a folder or a project, but let's create a new list and we're going to call this list Memphis because it deals with our Memphis trip. So I'm just going to call it Memphis. Now we're going to move our unlisted data into this Memphis list. So I'm just basically going to come down here and I'm holding down the shift key and I'm selecting all of these, my waypoints and my route. And I'm going to click and drag up to the Memphis list and I'm going to drop them in there. So now if we click on Memphis, all of our waypoints and routes related to this trip, you might say, or this project are all together in one place. It just makes more sense. So what I do is I create a separate list for each trip. Just easier to keep up. It's a way of organizing your waypoints and your routes. Now let's go back and take a look at our route that we created, which Basecamp has given it a name for us. And it's basically taking our two waypoints to create the name. Let me double click on this to open the route edit window. Now I can rename this route anything I want. I'm gonna, right now it's just got an automatic name. But if I uncheck that, I could call this Home to Memphis. Because that's all I really need to know. And you can see I have two waypoints in this route. Home and Memphis. Now you'll notice before that we are on interstates all the way. And that interstate was chosen for us by Basecamp based on our routing preferences. So let me close this window and I want to go up to Basecamp preferences and we'll take a look at the routing preferences. Let's click on the routing tab in preferences and you can see down here we have the option for road type avoidances. And I can instruct Basecamp to avoid interstates. And it will then create the route based on that selection. I also have the option under calculation mode to opt for curvy roads instead of fastest time. Now that's primarily something you would use for motorcycling. And you can see I have motorcycling routing preferences selected. But there's lots of other options, walking, hiking, bicycling, all kinds of things. But we're going to leave it set to motorcycling because that's what I have mine set to. So let's just for grins, let's move this over here and let's select road type avoidances. And I want to avoid interstates. I also want to avoid residential roads and unpaved roads. I can also choose to avoid toll roads. But we have a lot of toll roads in the Dallas-Fort Worth area that I use, so I'm not going to do that. You can also avoid carpool lanes, U-turns, ferries, and all these other options. So now I'm going to close Preferences, and I want Basecamp to recalculate my route based on these preferences. So I'm going to double-click again on my route, and if I go over here down at the bottom, you'll see this little reload option. When I click that, it will now recalculate the route based on the preferences I now have selected. So let's click that and see what happens. Ah, you see a dramatic change. It now has changed our route to avoid interstates whenever possible. There are cases where it may be impossible to avoid an interstate, but it looks like in this case, uh, interstates can be avoided the whole time. Now if you go over here to info, you'll see it's a total distance of 528 miles. 
and it's a total driving time of 10 hours and 41 minutes, which is probably going to be a lot longer than it was with interstate selected. So I can go back to preferences and I can uncheck interstates just so we can see the difference. Ah, it's 7 hours and 11 minutes if we use interstates. So we're adding about 3 hours to our trip by not avoiding the interstates. If we avoid the interstates, let's do it again. It'll recalculate and now it's up to 10 hours and 41 minutes. So we're almost adding 4 hours to our trip. But we're getting to take scenic back roads and that's a better option for me. Now in the next video, I'm going to talk about how we can split this route up into two routes and even add some more waypoints along the way to make it more meaningful trip. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, click on the little subscribe button down below, and if you click the bell icon, YouTube will notify you when we come out with more videos.